Hello, hello, and welcome to this week's video homework. This video is going to be talking about solutions that humans can take to reduce our impact on the environment and biodiversity. There are many different strategies that people can take to reduce our impact, but I'm just going to talk about one of these ideas. And this idea has a direct connection to us here in Oregon. I'm going to tell you about an initiative called the Clean Energy Jobs Bill. It's House Bill 2135. But first, let's get to the problem. Climate change is real. It is a fact. And the changes that we see are going to impact every single human on this earth, as well as all of the living organisms that live here with us. However, studies have shown that there are some people who are going to be disproportionately affected by these changes. And because of the way our society is set up, those in power typically are not the ones who have to endure the consequences. Instead, it'll be people of color, minorities, low-income families, firefighters, fishermen, farmers. All of these people are going to have a larger burden to carry because of the impacts of climate change than other people. So in Oregon, we're proposing this one solution among many called the Clean Energy Jobs Bill. The concept here is that we will put a cap, a regulation on how much carbon dioxide pollution businesses can produce. This will have the effect of limiting the total amount of pollution. And as this next century progresses, the amount of pollution that will be allowed, that cap, will get lower and lower over time. Further, we will then put a price on carbon dioxide pollution, which will incentivize companies to produce less carbon dioxide. And if they do produce less, they can then take the remaining allowance of carbon dioxide up to the limit and sell those to other companies that cannot reduce their carbon as much. And part of pricing the carbon dioxide is that the local government will be able to generate income which they can then use to reinvest into the clean energy economy. By this I mean they will be able to invest in better solar projects, wind projects, better public transportation, as well as energy efficient homes and businesses. Further, they will be prioritizing investments in communities that are going to be hit first and worst by climate change. The minorities and people of color and low-income families are going to be prioritized in the investments, reducing how much of a burden climate change will be to them. In this program, it'll only be the biggest carbon polluters that will have to participate in the cap-and-trade system. This works out to be the businesses which produce 25,000 tons of carbon per year or more. Small businesses won't be as affected. And as I said, over time, that cap, the maximum amount of carbon that companies can produce, will get smaller and smaller throughout the next 30 years to help alleviate the changes we'll see in our climate. And if companies exceed their limit, then they will pay a fee to other companies which have not reached their limit. They'll buy their extra carbon allowance from another company, and the revenue from that will also be reinvested in clean energy jobs. And further, since this is an Oregon-specific bill, if a company is competing with some other business outside of Oregon that doesn't have to follow these same laws, this bill provides an easement, an extra allowance, that allows them to still compete while buying carbon at a lower rate than other companies would. But luckily, a lot of the states nearby Oregon, such as Washington and California, already have cap-and-trade programs set in place. So to measure the impacts that this bill would have, I compared other cap-and-trade programs from California, from the European Union, and a program called the Northeast Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. I compared their results to what we would see in Oregon. And I put those values into our computational model to make some predictions. Oregon itself only produces a tiny fraction of the carbon emissions that the entire world produces. But since we are Oregonians, we have the responsibility to reduce that number 
as much as possible. Most cap and trade systems predict that there will be an 8% decrease in the amount of carbon emissions every year that the program is running. Using this value, I was able to calculate that by the year 2080, Oregon will be able to reduce their, our carbon emissions to zero, so long as we don't increase the amount of carbon we are already putting out. Further calculating some of those values, I found that on a global scale, we would be able to prevent 0.2% of species from going extinct. And using data on the endangered species here in Oregon, those two species might be things like the gray wolf or the Canadian lynx, two keystone species that would have a very large impact on functioning healthy ecosystems. This cap, trade, and then invest program is expected to generate about $700 million per year that will then be reinvested. And as I said before, it will be reinvested in communities that are going to be most impacted by climate change. It will help expand their opportunities by creating jobs and trainings to install solar panels, wind generators, as well as home weatherization and energy efficient appliances. Not only will these communities have better jobs, but they'll also be able to withstand the more severe weather anomalies that we see, like strong snowstorms in the winter or lasting droughts during the summer. If you weatherize and protect your home, the impact of those events are not as severe. All of these programs are part of work that people are doing around the world that are trying to limit increases in temperature of any more than 1.5 degrees Celsius. We don't want to exceed that number because if we do, then we will be losing key habitat and the extinction rate will increase exponentially. And that is the thing that we are trying to avoid. But of course, we will also need to discuss some of the costs of this program. Those businesses, who are the biggest polluters, who produce over 25,000 tons of carbon per year, they are gonna be the businesses that are most impacted. Often those are utility companies, the companies that are making our electricity by burning coal. And so it is predicted that residents of Oregon, our utility bills will increase a little initially, but eventually, over the next 20 years, we'll have a decreased utility bill by about 5.3%, less than what it is now. That's due to the investments that Oregon will make in clean energy such as solar and wind power. There are also estimates that this program will decrease Oregon's gross domestic product by about $1.3 billion. And that sounds like a huge number. However, when you compare that to the total Oregon GDP, it's actually only a 1% loss. And further, if you compare how much climate change will cost Oregonians, if we do nothing, that will cost us, by the year 2050, $3.25 billion. So while we would lose some GDP, it wouldn't be as much money lost as if we did nothing. Climate change will bring its own costs that we will have to pay, and this program will cost money, but it will be, it will be less than what it could be. And of course, if you wanna check any of this data, I will have the links down in the info box below. So I hope that was helpful, and I hope it provides you with an example of how to sell an idea of ways that humans can reduce our impact to the environment and biodiversity. I will see you in class, and I hope you bring with you some great questions. And I can't become my father when it's all been said and done. His completions won't complete me.